In this episode, we'll take a look at the HDTX, a new plug-on XLR transmitter for the Deity Connect wireless microphone system. Throughout this episode, we will indicate which microphone which camera and which recorder we're using down here at the bottom. In each case, we didn't do any sort of post-processing to sweeten the sound or to clean up the sound. I just wanted you to hear what it sounds like directly out of the camera or directly out of the recorder. As this is an audio gear review, you really kind of want to hear what it sounds like directly out. Now, of course, you can do some sweetening or cleanup in post if you need to do that. So first, let's get you a number of samples here with a variety of different microphones and cameras. All right, here's an audio sample. This time we're using the S-Mic 2, which is boomed right here out of the, well, it's actually in the frame intentionally. And we are transmitting from that with the HDTX over here to the receiver, which is sitting in this sound bag here and is feeding the audio into my sound device's 888 recorder mixer. This is to give you a sense for what this combination sounds like. We have the input level set to plus 21 dB on the HDTX and to minus the output level on the receiver is at minus 9 dB. And then we're basically using almost no gain um, here on the receiver. In this room, we don't have a lot going on. Relatively quiet. I've got sound blankets on either side of me, one over here by the camera, a blanket behind me on the floor, and we have a concrete wall behind me and concrete floor between me and the camera. And uh, overall, this is what this sounds like. Let's give you a few moments of silence here to assess the practical noise floor. That's going to be the combined room ambiance plus any self noise that the microphone and the wireless system and the recorder are generating together. In this sample here, we are using the HDTX and the 3.5 millimeter input here with the lavalier microphone that comes with the Deity Connect system, so you can hear what that sounds like. On the HDTX, we have the input level set to plus 18 dB, and then over here on the receiver, the output level set to minus 9 dB, and basically the gain is pretty much all the way down, well, whatever the lowest setting on the sound device's 888 is. <laughs> so, this is uh, to give you a sense for what this sounds like. I actually use this in a corporate piece uh, earlier this week. I can't unfortunately post it because it's all internal, but what I found was the results were actually quite good, actually surprisingly good. So I was really pleased with the progress that the Deity Connect system seems to have made since I tested the original system about a year ago. In this particular case, we're in the same space. I'm going to go ahead and give you a few moments of silence just so we can hear what that sounds like. That's going to be any room ambiance plus self noise generated by the microphone, the transmission, or the, the wireless system and the recorder itself. All right, in this case, we're using a dynamic microphone. This is the Audio-Technica A2005, which is a dynamic microphone. It's, a, it's a, actually a pretty cheap one. It's, I think it's less than $100, but this microphone is going into the HDTX and its input level is set to plus 24 dB. It's sending over to the receiver here, which has an output level of minus 9 dB into the sound device's 888, with its gain set almost to its lowest setting. So it's probably only applying five to 10 dB of gain. So this is what this one sounds like. And again, we'll do the kind of the silence uh, portion here, where we'll be capturing any sort of self noise in the microphone the wireless transmitter system and the audio recorder plus any ambient sound in this room. So what we're going to demonstrate here is what we would normally do in a pickup interview type of situation where you don't have time to put a lavalier microphone on the person you're interviewing. You could basically just walk up and start interviewing with them. And the idea here is I have a lavalier microphone on me and then we have the wireless um, HDTX with a handheld microphone on our interviewee. And the idea is I won't have to switch back and forth. We can just leave it on the interviewee the whole time and then this one will pick me up. So here's an example. Uh, 
as a musician, when you and you're in a duet, a violin duet, and you are looking for a sound engineer to do your recording, what kind of things are you looking for? What do you expect a, a good sound engineer to do? Uh, work on placement of the mics and of the people if necessary, and then also choosing a mic that will bring out the best in a treble instrument so we don't have a lot of bass. It's mostly the higher end frequencies, so something that will um, kind of bring that out in a nice way. And then also not a lot of getting a natural recording as opposed to putting a lot of effects on right out of the gate because that can distort the recording. Okay. Uh, do you like to have headphones to monitor what's happening or do you prefer just to listen to the instrument in the room itself? It depends on what I'm doing. Of course, if I'm doing, um, this wouldn't happen in the duo, but if I was going to record multi-track, of course, you'd absolutely have to have headphones. But I prefer a more natural, just kind of the room sound. Okay. Overall, the HDTX seems to do especially well with condenser microphones, seems to do pretty well with lavalier microphones as well, depending on which lavalier you're using, of course. With handheld dynamic microphones, it is pushing the preamp a little bit harder, so you're going to get a little bit of uh, higher noise floor, as you saw in the sample there. Let's talk about self-noise performance and actually practical noise. This is not a perfect measure of self-noise, which is noise generated by the electronics of the entire system. Instead, this is a practical noise floor test. And so what I did here is in those silent sections that we played back with the earlier samples, I measured those and looked at the RMS decibels full scale. And what we found was that with the condenser microphone, which in this case was the DDS mic 2, we got great noise floor performance. We were down at minus 75 dB in that range, which is really, really good. With a lavalier microphone, this is the lavalier that came with the Deity Connect system. It doesn't sound amazing, <laughs> but it's a pretty decent microphone. And the noise performance there was a respectable minus 70. And that's actually a testament to how the Deity Connect system has improved. In our initial tests, we didn't perform quite that well. So they've definitely made some steps forward since we first tested that about a year ago. So really nice job on Deity's part, moving this system forward and improving its performance. Now with handheld dynamic microphones, we came around somewhere in the minus 65 range. And I'd like to see that a little bit better, but it's definitely usable. And if you apply a high pass filter like we did here afterwards, you can actually reclaim another three decibels. So that dropped the noise floor to about minus 68. That's definitely usable. So just so you're aware, with dynamic handheld microphones, I think you're gonna be pushing the preamps pretty hard in this, and you're gonna kind of be operating what I would consider the kind of the threshold for overall noise floor, but it is usable. Now, as you probably gathered, because we use some condenser microphones here, like shotgun microphones, the HDTX does provide 48 volts phantom power, so that's a fantastic feature. It also has an analog limiter. Here's a sample. Here's a test of the limiters here in the transmitter, the HDTX. I have the input level set to 27 using the Sennheiser MKH416. And you can see as we talk here, we might just be hitting those limiters. <laughs> in fact, I can see that we are. I'm looking at the receiver right over here. Check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Test of the limiters on the Deity HDTX. Now, what a limiter does is it helps to prevent the distortion that you get when your audio becomes too loud. And it's, it could be because your gain is set too high and the combination of that with a loud sound source. What the limiter does is it helps to prevent that. Now, it's not perfect. You could tell there was still a little bit of distortion in the signal there, but it was definitely better than if there were no analog limiter. So the analog limiter it has also performed better in the HDTX than in our original test with the original Deity Connect. So again, another testament to the steps forward that Deity has taken with the Connect system. One of the really cool and unique things about the HDTX is that it's simultaneously a wireless transmitter for XLR microphones or 3.5 millimeter microphones. And at the same time, you can record to an internal micro SD card. Now, that's super useful. So if for some reason the wireless signal drops and doesn't make it back to your camera or recorder, you still have a recording on the micro SD card. Now there's a limitation there. In the United States, there are patents owned by another company for that technology. So in the United States, it's either a recorder or a wireless transmitter, not both at the same time. So you have to kind of choose. If you are having problems with wireless, what you can do is press record. It turns off the wireless transmission and then the HDTX becomes solely an SD card recorder. If on the other hand, 
the wireless is working, then you just leave it on wireless and you're wirelessly transmitting. So you got to kind of get the best of both worlds. It's unfortunate that there are patents owned by another company on that technology here in the United States, but it's better than not having the option of falling back to a recorder at all. So I'm really happy with what DD has done here. I think it's a really nice step forward. Now, if you do need to kind of put the HDTX to double duty use, and in some cases you need to use it as a body pack transmitter, you can do that. It has a locking 3.5 millimeter microphone input for lavalier microphones. The size of the unit itself is, you know, it's a little bit awkward for using it as a body pack transmitter. So if you're really trying to bury it for narrative work or scripted narrative type pieces, it's not ideal for that, but it could certainly work in a pinch. And I think for news gathering and less formal things, vlogging, things of that nature, it can definitely work great as a body pack transmitter. It also does have a 3.5 millimeter jack for monitoring from headphones. And the headphone amplifier seems actually surprisingly good for a little device like this. So you're not gonna be able to drive your 250 ohm audiophile headphones, but anything up to about 100 ohms in my test seem to do really well. Just like the rest of the body pack transmitters from the Deity Connect system, we do have a low cut filter. And we also have a high frequency boost option. So low cut filter is going to be helpful for cases where you want to reduce any sort of rumble in your recording at the time of recording. And it is configurable. So you can actually change the setting to get more aggressive if you're out maybe in the wind and you don't have the best wind protection, which you should have, by the way. But if you don't, <laughs> you can get more aggressive with that low cut filter. Or if you're working indoors and you just want to get rid of some of the kind of the low frequency boomy stuff, then you can just apply a lighter low cut filter, say for example, maybe somewhere between the 40 and 80 Hertz range, and just get rid of that low frequency rumble that isn't contributing anything to your dialogue recordings. The HDTX has an inbuilt lithium battery, and this battery is pretty impressive. In our tests, we found that you could power for 12 hours and 30 minutes when you're transmitting wirelessly while using phantom power at the same time with the transmission RF power set to automatic. Wow, that's really impressive. Then just using it as an SD card recorder with phantom power on, not transmitting wireless, because we can't do that in the United States at the same time, we got 10 hours and 29 minutes of powering time. So that is really, really impressive. So here's one of the issues that comes up a lot when you're talking about devices like this. It has an inbuilt battery. It's a lithium battery. Some people complain about that, and I understand that point of view. You don't want your product to become a piece of e-junk when the battery stops working. So... I'm sure you're probably going to be able to get at least 500 charge cycles. There wasn't any spec that said exactly how many charge cycles you could get, but I'm going to assume at least 500, probably more than that. But I've also talked to Andrew over at Deity, and he did mention at one point that they were working on a battery replacement program. So there's hope that you could potentially change that out when the battery stops working eventually. So it's a little bit of a pro and a con depending on how you look at it, but those kind of powering times I can tell you are generally not possible with any kind of AA replaceable battery, whether it's rechargeable or not. So you're getting some really, really impressive powering times here. You recharge the battery internally using a USB-C cable, which is included with the HDTX, and to charge from absolutely empty all the way to full took two hours and 32 minutes in my tests. Now, of all the 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphone systems on the market, and typically those are consumer grade wireless microphone systems, this one is the most powerful. You can actually set the RF power to automatically adjust itself. So if it's struggling to keep connectivity, it will increase its output power from the transmitter. And you can also manually set it, if you prefer to do that, anywhere between 10 milliwatts all the way up to 100 milliwatts. A lot of the pro systems only go up to 50 milliwatts, so this is actually really a pretty nice feature and certainly one of the best features I've seen on the 2.4 gigahertz systems out there today. Now, it's important to note that 2.4 gigahertz is still 2.4 gigahertz. The professional systems are usually transmitting over UHF frequencies, which are much lower frequencies. And they're able to penetrate barriers a lot better. But now when you have this option to go up to 100 milliwatts, you're going to have a better experience overall with this particular 2.4 gigahertz system from Deity versus a lot of the others. A lot of the others top out at maybe between, some of them are as low as like 5 milliwatts, and some of them top out closer to 10 or 15 milliwatts. So a lot more transmitting power here if you need it. Next up, we have some indoor and outdoor distance tests. The idea here is I want to push the limits of this gear to see how far we can get the transmitter from the receiver and still hold a signal, both going around corners and outdoors going really far away. So here we go. All right, so that's going to be two feet. This will be about 10 feet. 
All right, we're gonna do an outdoor test here. Now, a couple of things I need to note. Uh, here we're using the DDS Mic 2S, the short shotgun microphone, on the HDTX. Uh, going back to my Panasonic GH5, the audio is going directly into the Panasonic GH5. The input level here is set to plus 12 dB, and then the output is set to minus 21 on the receiver, and then the input level on the camera is set to minus 12, which is its lowest setting. So this is what we can expect on about 10 feet away. Now, a note, this is the most brutal possible test that I've come up with for 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphone systems like the Deity Connect. Um, so don't freak out here if we lose connectivity, and I expect we will pretty soon. Um, it's normal in these kind of circumstances I've found with the 2.4 gigahertz systems. When there's not, um, when you're inside so for whatever reason, and I don't entirely understand how all of the wireless transmission works, but in, when you're indoors, typically you will get better uh, distance performance. Outdoors, not so much. So we've got parking spots here, which I've measured at about eight feet per. So right now we're one away plus another two feet to the camera. So this is about 10 feet. We'll put the conversion to metric over here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around. Um, in some cases, this will be between me and the receiver as I turn around and walk away. And that'll be a test as well. So here we are, 10 feet. So this is two. And I'll put it off to the side here, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this should be about 80 feet here. Turning around again just to see, make sure that we're still getting connectivity. It looks like we do have connectivity. Let me turn around and see what happens on the display here. It says that we've lost some of the signal. But again, this is about 80 feet, so that's 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, this is 20. So here we are at 20 parking spaces. We'll put the distances here on the screen so you can see what that's like. Continue on, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. All right, we're at 28 parking spots here. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of a distance test indoors here. So let's see how far we're going here. One, two, three, four, five. Here's about five meters right now. And we're gonna go this way and count it off and then go around the corner. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. This is about 15 meters right here. Over here, there's about 25 meters. And we're gonna go around the corner now here and see how this signal holds up here. So I've now officially gone around the corner and I'm gonna stay here for just a few seconds here and see how the signal does. I'm facing away from the direction I came. So the microphone is on the opposite side of me from the receiver. And now we'll bring it back here just to see how this goes. So I'm gonna come back this way, I'm right over here back in line of sight, so we should be getting a signal again. Again, just to see how this holds up. And then we are back now within about five meters right here. One of the questions I get all the time is, well, which wireless system should I buy? Should I buy the Deity Connect? Should I buy the Sennheiser G4? Should I buy, you know, so on and so forth. And there's not a simple answer to that question. But what I can say is the 2.4 gigahertz systems tend to be really easy to use. They're generally consumer grade systems with the exception now of the Deity, which seems to be really kind of pushing the boundaries of prosumer. Because what they've done here that's very interesting is they give you a lot of configurability. And you don't get that on a lot of the other 2.4 gigahertz systems. A lot of them, you basically just put it on and hope for the best. In this case, you get full control of the input level and the output level on both the transmitter and the receiver. And you get a lot of other options as well. You have low cut filters, you have high frequency boost. If you're putting your microphone in a kind of Zeppelin cover for using it outdoors, that'll cut some of the high frequency. 
Now you have the option within the microphone system to boost up those high frequencies a little bit to get a better overall sound. You get an option to choose the power output level. That's unprecedented. I haven't seen that in any of the other 2.4 gigahertz wireless mic systems. You also get antennas with SMA connectors on the receiver, which means you can actually replace them with different antennas if you wanted to. If you wanted to make a mini shark fin 2.4 gigahertz antenna, you could do that as well, or buy one of the third party antennas on the market. So you get a lot more options with this system than you do with any of the other 2.4 gigahertz systems I've worked with. The build quality of the HDTX is actually quite good. It's solid metal and plastic. Feels like it'll hold up nicely. And the kit that I got also came with this kind of pleather cover that you can put on the HDTX to protect it from drops and things of that nature. The DD Connect system is firmware updatable and we're seeing some of the benefits of that already. Again, I tested the original system about a year ago and I think we've seen some improvement. We've seen some improvement in the limiter somehow. I don't know how they've done that. I don't know if they've changed the hardware or if it was just a firmware update. But we've also seen additional options. We actually saw some bug fixes in some of the firmware updates. So we're really seeing some nice steps forward and it's great to have that firmware updatability. This is kind of a small thing, but you can actually give each of the transmitters their own custom name, including the HDTX. So that way on the receiver, you will see the name and you'll be able to identify very quickly which transmitter is which. At the time of this review, the HDTX is priced at $250 US, which is a very good price for this kind of transmitter. Now, no product is perfect. Let's talk about what I would see as some of the cons here. Number one, again, as we mentioned before, those dynamic microphones, which require a lot of gain, the preamps on the HDTX are kind of pushing to their limits to give them enough amplification. So the noise floor will be a little bit more prominent in those. However, the good news is that typically when you're using a dynamic microphone and in interviewing, you're gonna be in a pretty noisy place. You're doing kind of walk-up interviews is kind of the main use case for that. And if you're on a busy convention show floor or out on the street interviewing people, there's gonna be so much ambient noise, you're probably not gonna hear any of that other self noise anyway. So it's, it's, I wanted you to know about it. It's not perfect, but it's also not a deal breaker. The other con we talked about was the inbuilt battery. And again, I think that if Deity comes through with that battery replacement program, to me, this is a non-issue, mostly. Um, the powering time I got would make it so that I couldn't necessarily use it on set if I were doing really long production days. So I've done 15 hour production days before. That's not terribly unusual. So it may not last through that entire time. You do have the ability to USB power it even while you're using it. Um, but I wouldn't wanna do that necessarily on a transmitter like this. So I think this is gonna be great for uh, news gathering types of situations, absolutely. Um, but overall, I think the Deity has made kind of an interesting trade-off here. And if they do come through with that battery replacement program, I think they made a good choice. So overall, my take on the Deity Connect HDTX and actually the Deity Connect wireless system in general, including the body pack transmitters, uh, this has come a long way. This is probably, to me, the best 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphone system for indie filmmakers that's out on the market as of right now, January 2020. So what are the things I like about it? I love that it has analog limiters in it, so you're going to get a lot more protection from overmodulation, people getting louder than you expected them to get, and if you may have made a minor gain adjustment error. So you get that protection, which is unprecedented at this price range. Having an inbuilt recorder is also not something that I've seen on a product in this price range and with a 2.4 gigahertz system. So unfortunately in the United States, because of patent issues, you can't use it at the same time you're transmitting wirelessly, but everywhere else in the world you can. And even if you are working in the United States and you're having trouble keeping the wireless system connected, you do have the option to fall back to just an SD card recording, which is better than nothing. Other systems don't even give you that option. It's flexible enough. You can use it with 3.5 millimeter lavalier microphones as well if you need to do that. And just overall, they've done a really nice, thoughtful job. I'm really impressed with the distance performance, impressed with everything. So I think for its price, this is a pretty amazing little plug-on transmitter. So hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.